One good experience that the Red Cross the World Over has is not just helping during the time of the crisis, but what happens after that? Because that is where the real crisis occurs. Uh, economic, uh, social, uh, livelihood, all these things are very synonymous with uh, the Red Cross the, and the Red Crescent movement because this is what you all work all throughout. Now, what do you see in terms of uh, this crisis? Because the entire world is affected. The entire world's resources are stretched and the entire world needs to rebuild. So, w w what is exactly what? What are you seeing, and what what are your what are you thinking in order to meet these requirements as we move on? This is a very very big issue uh, for the policymakers and and the decision makers moving forward. I think the, the you know one of the huge impact of the COVID-19 has been on the socio-economic field. Of course, many of the country's economy have been severely strained. Um, now, what will happen is as the governments start relaxing some of the measures uh, put in place, uh, I absolutely believe that the economies at the macro level will start rebounding very, very quickly. As we have seen in some of the countries, when the economies are opening, they are rebounding very, very quickly. So at the macro level, I think the economic progress would be very rapid. But the big risk there is the most vulnerable gets left behind. So one of the very important element of this recovery process would be for the, for the government and for the policy makers is to make sure that the most vulnerable are not left behind in this, in this, reco in this recovery process. So the inclusive recovery is very like, like, like who when you say most vulnerable, what kind of people are you talking about here? I mean this could be a, a number of categories. One is of course the, the, the financially weaker section of the communities uh, and, and of course it's a bit different in different countries. Um, you know these are the people somehow excluded in the development process for various reasons. The people living in uh, you know, informal settlements, for example, people living in slums, migrants populations or the refugee populations, or in some countries purely the, the socio, social exclusion, let me put it this way. Mm. So, and these populations are quite big in, 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 in many countries. And if these people are excluded from the, from the development, and maybe in South Asia, the one category of people, which is very important category, is the daily wage earners. Mm. Uh, and because COVID has completely disrupted their, their way of living. So special attention needs to be paid for a, a, a decent recovery of the, of the country. You know, you cannot leave a huge section of the society behind. And, and that is something extremely important for the policymakers. And from the Red Cross point of view, because the crisis is so big, our contribution would be a, a, a modest one. And, and we will be focusing on the most vulnerable of the most vulnerable, uh, you know, really to fill, to fill those gaps. And there, our approach would be supporting them through a livelihood angles. And that livelihood angles could be through a cash support, or, but also could be a more traditional livelihood, livelihood support. But it will be a very, very modest contribution. So the leadership will have to come from the governments and the big private sector would be, and then of course the, the international development institutions will have to play a very, very big role. That's on the economic side. So my belief is economy will rebound very fast, but we should not leave the, the most vulnerable behind. But a, a bigger worry in my view is the impact on the mental health. Of the, of the population. We still don't know the extent of the scar, the mental health scar this crisis would be leaving behind uh, for a massive uh, population and especially in the young population. Its impact on education is another one. We still don't fully know what is, what, what is its impact. And, and that's where I think the experts and the policy maker will have to pay a very, very special attention and ramping up the mental health support will be very important. And from Red Cross point of view, we are we are beefing up our mental health capacity. Uh, as you know, we have the mental health uh, reference center in Copenhagen in Denmark, and we are ramping up its capacity because we realize that the more and more countries would be seeking uh, for, for help on, 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 on that aspect. And finally, um, we also have to look at the institutional impact COVID-19 is having. Many NGOs have closed down during this mm. time. Uh, many small businesses have, have closed down during this time many the institutions have been severely impacted. Now, how do we help these institutions recover would be another, another big element. And one of the things from the IFRC uh, we have been highlighting is 
While the pandemic is so much on our face last two years, there is a bigger crisis, and that's the climate crisis. And Sri Lanka is one of the countries with the highest risk. I think it's, it's within the top 10 countries of the high risk of the, of the climate. So while we are focusing on the COVID recovery, it's very important that the COVID recovery is climate smart. <laughs>